Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Genuine APBT. On today's episode, I generally want to speak on some chemicals that might be useful to you if you own an American Pit Bull Terrier or any other breed. But in this case, an American Pit Bull Terrier, why? Because American Pit Bull Terriers are really intense dogs. And if you're doing something as simple as playing with a golf ball out in a field and there's trees or bushes that have branches, your dog can end up with some minor scrapes and lacerations, abrasions, stuff like that. Um, it's also good. Some of this stuff is also good for some burns or some um, animal bites or insect bites. And what I want to do is just go over some general treatment of antiseptic first aid stuff and what works good, better, and what I think best. And then maybe some application if there's some hair loss, things like that. And then different types of shampoos for different types of treatment and then some of the general yard treatment stuff and then maintenance stuff for some flies and and things like that okay and remember this is just my experience i'm not a veterinarian um, and i'm not suggesting that you do what i do it's just sharing what i've done in hopes that you might be able to save some money and try some products and know if they've worked or how they've worked according to the video. So watch it all the way through if you want. And um, again, it could be useful for you so there won't be so much trial and error. Okay, here we go. Again, from what works good to better and then what I believe to be the best. As far as a topical antiseptic, okay, obviously you can start with just rubbing alcohol. The pros of that is, yes, it's a really good, cheap, easily available antiseptic, but um, also it could uh, be a little rough uh, on, on the wound. Um, you know, it, it eats at the wound. It could eat a little bit at the flesh that's left at the wound. So it wouldn't be my first choice, but if that's all you have, you definitely want to clean it out and, and you want to do that. It could be corrosive. That's the word I was looking for. It could be a little bit corrosive uh, at the wound and whatever's left there at, at the flesh or at the point of the injury or the wound. Uh, second is less corrosive, hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is good. Again, readily available, really, really cheap. And what I do is I put it in a spray bottle like this and I just spray it directly on the dog. You can either pat dry or you can just let it dry on its own and you can do it several times a day depending on the wound itself. Another thing that you can use is um, betadine solution. Great uh, antiseptic and microbicide, and that's fine. Um, it, it works really, really good. It's at the top level of, of what you can use. The only setback with this is that it's extremely expensive, I think. For 16 ounces, it's about $20. I think that's what I paid for this. Um, yeah, there you go. $19.99 for 16 ounces for the name brand, right? Betadine. And it's really just, you know, iodine, 5% iodine. So you can get the non-name brand for a lot cheaper, probably somewhere like Target or Walgreens. Not sure. But in any case, it's iodine, but it's uh, betadine or betadine right now here and 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 it's good it works well now when you compare that which i would consider good much better and comparable to what i think is the best is the chlorhexidine solution it works fantastic and the difference between the betadine or the iodine and the chlorhexidine is that the chlorhexidine continues to work about three days after application. That's one. Two, uh, another positive is that the chlorhexidine, the ratio, the mix ratio is fantastic. You see here, it's one ounce or two tablespoons of the chlorhexidine solution per one gallon of clean water. So this gallon will last you a long, long time compared to the straight betadine. And this is about $24 plus tax free delivery. You can get it cheaper on Amazon. I ordered it through Walmart only because Amazon would not deliver it 
to my zip code. I don't know why. This particular product was not available to my address from Amazon, but Walmart delivered it through UPS. I think it was $24 plus tax and the Amazon brand. It wasn't an Amazon brand, but it was a different brand that was available in Amazon. That was, I think, $17. That works fantastic. And it's good for horses. It's good for dogs. Um, as you can see here, you just follow all the directions and the indications there. It's a great topical uh, cleaning solution for dogs and horses. Now, if there's hair loss in some of the wounds or a rash or anything like that, you, a lot of you are familiar with the new stock. It works really good. Um, the problem I have with this particular product is that if you have it sitting this way, sometimes the mineral oil that's part of the ingredients will leak out of there. And then you just get a really hard paste that's hard to apply. But when you use it prior to that happening, it works really well. I think this is a better product, uh, Shapley's uh, MTG. It works really, really good if there's any hair loss uh, because of a insect bite or something else, especially on the tail, um, but any anywhere else on the body. And what you want to do is usually if you let it sit, it separates itself and all the good stuff stays on the bottom. And then you'll have just a clear liquid on the top. So you want to shake it. You want to shake it really good for all that stuff that's sitting there. And it sits quick. I mean, see how it's coming off? It sits really, really quick. It settles really, really quick. So what you want to do is, is you just want to shake it. You want to make sure it's distributed throughout whatever you're going to apply. But these two things work really well if there's hair loss. But you want to treat the infection first. You want to treat the cut first and make sure it's clean. Make sure that you've treated it. And then you can deal with the hair loss. Don't apply this stuff if you think there's an open wound that needs attention. Now, if you happen to have um, different types of issues, these this Verbac brand works really, really good. This is just a standard. The Verbac Allegroom is just a standard shampoo that you can actually use every single day. Now, I'm not suggesting that you bathe your dog every day. You want to leave some of the natural oils in the dog, in the dog. But if it's so um, gentle on them that you can use it every day. It moisturizes and it's soap free and it works excellent. It's a little more expensive. You can even buy it in the gallon version. I used to have that, but you can use just the Allegroom from Verbac. Great everyday shampoo. If you happen to have uh, your dog that's broken out in hives and you don't know particularly why, you want to use something like a EpiSoothe. The EpiSoothe is great because it soothes the skin, it moisturizes and it hydrates the skin. And that's what you want because the skin is reacting in an allergic way to something unknown. So you just wanna go in there and soothe it, especially if you don't know what it is. This product works excellent. Verbac EpiSoothe, excellent product. The other product is the Verbac Keratolux. That's what it is, it's a Keratolux. If it's pronounced different, tell me, you know, but I pronounce it exactly the way it says there. It's keratolox, or I guess. The reason you want this is if you happen to have an allergic reaction from something you do know, like uh, flea bites. If you happen to have an allergic reaction from flea bites, that's called, basically it's like dog acne. You'll get little bumps with pus and, and things like that. This stuff works excellent for that. It's not the same as the EpiSoothe. The EpiSoothe is for unknown and if you get some hives and stuff like that. But if you happen to get an allergic reaction for something like uh, flea bites that you, don't, that you might not catch, like if you have your dog tethered and it happens to bite him underneath the collar and you don't check the collar every single day, like underneath their collar every day, a lot of people don't, you know, and it's, and it's not reasonable to think that you're gonna untether the dog and check his collar every day. No, sometimes you leave him on there for a day or two and that's acceptable and that's understandable. So, but if you happen to get a flea bite underneath the collar and you don't see it and it's not quite visible by the time you take the collar off, you might have a reaction where it's gonna create that, I think it's called a keratosoboric, keratosoboric reaction or something like that, but it manages that. That's why it's called keratolox um, and it works absolutely great. It gets in there 
and you can follow the directions on there and then give it time to work and it does work, okay? Another soap, and it's not for any particular reason, it's just a really good soap. The great thing about this is that they have two of these at Costco for under 20 bucks, and I think you get 25 ounces in each one. So it's really good, and it's for humans. Uh, Dr. Broner's Pure Castle Soap. Great soap, tons of oils in there. Great to wash the dogs with, wash them off. I don't think that you can use it as frequent as just your regular Verbac Allegroom. I think this is a little more gentle, but again, I don't bathe the dogs every day. I just made that statement to show how gentle they were. Now to treat your area and your space. Pobro virus, we all know that Clorox or bleach will kill uh, the Pobro virus, okay? But just a reminder, the bleach won't work. If you do not rinse and pick up feces or throw up or anything like that, that's organic, it's called organic uh, material, um, you can't, I don't think you would, but just in case somebody's silly enough to spray bleach water on feces, <laughs> that's really ignorant. You don't want to do that. You want to clean the area off the best that you can and then water it down, rinse it down, and you'll be helping this product, giving it more of an ability to clean. Uh, then you can use, I think I use the formula just for regular general cleaning, um, which is the same thing as the hospital disinfection. I think it's a one third cup to a one, uh, three quarters of a gallon. Okay. So it's one third of a cup to three quarters of a gallon or three fourths of a gallon. You can do that. And for general disinfecting, it's the same thing. One third cup. There it is there. General disinfecting one third cup to three quarters of a gallon. This is good. And this is fine on, uh, Parble virus. Now, we all know that this does not kill coccidia, okay, intestinal uh, parasite or intestinal pathogen. Uh, it doesn't kill it. What you want for that is ammonia. Ammonia has been found to kill coccidia, okay? A lot of people think that this kills it. It does not. It's not effective. This is, but this might not be as effective for treating other areas. So, Common sense, what do you do? Treat it with both, treat it with both, all right? And then that way you, uh, again, attack more pathogens than you would with just one. Now for those of you that have dogs where it's cement and or it's a tighter area in the inner city and it smells like pee and you can't get rid of that pee smell or anything like that, this stuff works excellent. You wanna spray it and then you want to let it sit and you want the acidic value of this to start breaking up the dried urine or throw up or feces, uh, little particles of feces that are left over that you can't see. You want this to start tearing that up. You used to be able to have to order it only online, but I think, I'm not sure, but I think you could buy it at Home Depot now, which is excellent. It works great. Just thought I'd throw that in there. It really does eliminate the order. It eliminates the order, so that's really good. Uh, fly treatment, I buy this. The Ultra Shield is for horses. It's uh, Absorbine is the brand, and I think I bought it as a package. They gave me the gallon, and then they gave me this, um, I don't know, 30-ounce bottle or whatever. I don't, I don't know what it is, 32 ounces, um, and it came together, and I think it was enough to use it for over a year uh, for my dog, so that's good. And then I put this on their ears. I put the SWAT, the clear one, just because it's cheaper. I don't need the pink one. The pink one doesn't work any better. It's just colored, so you know when it wears off. Well, I know when it wears off when I start seeing flies get a little comfortable around the dogs. So this is much cheaper to get the clear one. It's white, and I use it. It works great here in Southern California, and the way I have them, they're not around a lot of vegetation. So I think once in the summer, it's once every two to three days, and in the winter, it's like once every five days. There's not a lot of flies in the winter. That's really it. So look, when you have dogs, you're gonna have to spend some money on them if you love them. I mean, this this workbench used to be for motorcycles. I have a few, and now it's, <laughs> I mean, look at this. It's just, it's just the way it is when you have dogs, you know? It's just the way it's gonna have to go. You know, there's just tons of stuff. This is hilarious. I use the big one, and I've always used the big one. My wife ordered one, and it, it came in this little baby one, so it's, it's kind of funny. We laugh at that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's just 
tons of stuff and it always is that you know there's different types of stuff that you can use for different applications but again when you have these dogs you know be willing to put in the time be willing to put in the information and the research guys so anyways i know the video was a little longer but it was a lot of products that i wanted to go over and hopefully it will help you and uh, you won't spend a lot of money in the trial and error part of it all right like always know them love them and raise them responsibly